This tip is a very beginner friendly one. Let's create a door event that requires a key to open it. First, we need to create our key. We'll just call this door key and make it a key item. Go ahead and change consumable to no and occasion to never. Now create your door. For this example, I'll be using the quick event creation. At the top of the event, create a conditional branch. Go to page four and select item, then select your door key. Make sure you check create else branch. If your party has the key, you want to turn on the self switch for the event page that has the unlocked door, or in this case, we just want all the quick event creation contents to activate. You can also remove the item from the player's inventory if you want to make your key single use. Under the else branch, you can put a message that says something like, this door is locked, looks like you need a key. If you try to enter the door without the key, you'll get your door is locked message. Once you grab the key, then go to the door, the door will open. Every item has a flag called consumable. What does consumable do? It dictates whether or not an item will disappear when you use it. To show an example of this, I have two items here. One is called potion and the other is appropriately named never ending potion. The potions consumable flag is set to yes, which means that when you use a potion, it'll disappear from your inventory. The never ending potion has its consumable flag set to no, which means it will not disappear from our inventory when we use it, no matter how many times we use it. Let's see what this looks like. When we use the regular potion on our character, we lose one with each use. However, when we use the never ending potion, it stays at the same quantity since we have consumable set to no. In situations where you might use multiple switches to account for something, you should probably be using variables instead. In this particular scene, we want the main character to get out of bed and do three things. Check the bookshelf, grab some bread, and look at the journal. Instead of creating a switch for each one of these and then checking to make sure every single switch is turned on before we can leave, we can use one single variable to accomplish the same thing. We'll call this variable getting prepared. For each event, instead of using a switch, have that event increase getting prepared by one. After the player has interacted with all of the events, that variable should now equal three. Then in the event that is blocking the player from passing unless everything else is completed, use a conditional branch or the event page itself to make sure that the variable is equal to three before they can pass. Sometimes your event flows for game mechanics, scripts, or even storylines can become so complex that you need a tool to help you keep sight of the smaller details. Draw.io is a free flowchart maker that you can either run as a web app or download to your PC and run as a local application. I personally have been using this for a little bit working on some scripts, one of which is a spawn system where the player, chests, and enemies are randomized. There are a lot of things to account for in a system like this, so having this tool to help organize my thoughts is extremely helpful. The amount of customization available to you is almost endless with various line types, bubble types, pre-made charts, font stylings, just about anything you can think of. Like I said before, this is a free tool and it would be a great addition to any dev's toolkit. There are four flags under event options you can turn on or off. We're going to talk about stepping. Stepping will cycle through an event's movement animation for the direction that it's facing while the event is standing still. If you take a look at the top row of this event's character sheet, you can see that there are three frames of animation. When stepping is off, it will only show the frame you have selected for the event's graphic. When stepping is on, it will cycle through these three frames to make the character look like it's stepping. You can use this for something like a character looting a chest or mining, but this becomes more interesting for objects. With this crystal ball, if you turn on stepping, it will cycle through these three frames to give the illusion that it's glowing. What are some of the most interesting ways you've used the stepping option? In the last one, we talked about the stepping flag. So now let's talk about walking. When the walking flag is checked, the event will cycle through the three frames of its walking animation when it moves from tile to tile. If this is unchecked, it will not cycle through these and it will only show one of the animation frames depending on which one you chose. The event will just sort of slide around in the direction that it's moving. While this might look quite silly for NPCs, where this is more useful is on objects. If you have a puzzle mechanic, it wouldn't make sense for something like this statue to go through its animation frames. It looks pretty bad. For this event, you would want to turn the walking flag off, and for this particular character sheet, you would want to turn direction fix on as well, 
because the statue graphic changes as the event turns in each direction. Direction Fix keeps the graphic from changing to a different direction when it moves. As a quick side note, your use of this flag might depend on how your character sheet is set up and you may not even need to turn it off. Having an enemy chase the player down to initiate an encounter is a pretty popular RPG mechanic. This is done very easily in RPG Maker. Set your event's autonomous movement type to Approach and set the event's trigger to Event Touch. This will cause the event to move toward the player at the speed and frequency you selected and will trigger the contents of the event page when it runs into them. This is great for visual enemy encounters and also chase sequences, where the player needs to run away from the event or escape the area before being caught by something. As a side note, there are plugins out there and even some event flows you can make that give you more granular control if you wanted to do something like change the radius at which the event will choose to follow the player. If you don't need that, however, this is an easy solution. If you're new to RPG Maker, you might not know that there's an event command that will make the player character completely invisible. This event command is called Change Transparency. When you want the character to be invisible, you turn the transparency on. When you want them to be visible again, you turn transparency off. There's also an option in the database under System 1 to start in transparent, which you can use for opening cutscenes where you don't want the player visible. Transparency is invaluable for a variety of things and is a great event command to add to your toolkit.